Welcome to our video on commonly used structural engineering formulas. First, let's start with the moment of inertia formula for a beam. This is represented by the equation, where B is the width of the beam and H is the height of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the resistance of a beam to bending and torsional forces. Next, we have the formula for bending stress in a beam. This is represented by the equation, where n is the moment at a section along the beam, i is the distance from the neutral axis to the point of interest, and i is the moment of inertia of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the amount of stress a beam can withstand in a bending load. Moving on, we have the formula for shear stress in a beam. This is represented by the equation, where V is the shear force at a section along the beam. Q is the first moment of the area of the cross-section about the neutral axis, and IT is the torsional constant of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the amount of stress a beam can withstand in a shear load. Now let's look at the formula for deflection of a beam. This is represented by the equation, where W is the distributed load on the beam, L is the length of the beam, E is the Young's modulus of the material, and I is the moment of inertia of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the amount of deflection or bending a beam will experience under a load. Next, we have the formula for torsional stiffness of a beam. This is represented by the equation where B is the width of the beam and H is the height of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the resistance of a beam to torsional forces. Continuing on, we have the formula for natural frequency of a beam. This is represented by the equation, where E is the Young's modulus of the material, I is the moment of inertia of the beam, M is the mass of the beam, and L is the length of the beam. This formula is used to calculate the natural frequency at which a beam will vibrate. Next, we have the formula for maximum bending stress in a column. This is represented by the equation, where PCER is the critical buckling load of the column, and A is the cross-sectional area of the column. This formula is used to calculate the maximum amount of stress a column can withstand in a bending load. Next. We have the formula for the buckling load of a column is represented by the equation, where E is the Young's modulus of the material, I is the moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area of the column, and L is the length of the column. This formula is used to calculate the critical buckling load of a column, which is the maximum load that the column can withstand before it collapses due to buckling. This formula is based on the Ola Bernoulli beam theory which assumes that the column is subjected to an axial compressive load and that the cross-section remains plain and straight during bending. The value of PCR depends on the material properties, the size and shape of the cross-section, and the length of the column. Continuing on, we have the formula for slenderness ratio of a column. This is represented by the equation where L is the length of the column and R is the radius of gyration of the cross-sectional area of the column. This formula is used to calculate the slenderness or slenderness ratio of a column, which is a measure of its stability under a load. Finally, we have the formula for the total lateral force in a building subjected to wind loads is represented by the equation, where F is the total lateral force. QEZ is the wind pressure acting on the building, CP is the coefficient of pressure for the particular wind direction, and A is the projected area of the building normal to the wind direction. This formula is used to calculate the lateral force that a building experiences due to wind loads, which is important for determining the structural design of the building and ensuring that it can withstand these forces. The coefficient of pressure and projected area depend on the shape and orientation of the building, and the wind pressure depends on the local wind conditions and the height of the building. That concludes our overview of commonly used structural engineering formulas. We hope this video has helped you better understand the various formulas used in the design and analysis of structures. 
Remember, these formulas are just tools to help us understand and analyze the behavior of structures, and they should always be used with caution and a thorough understanding of their limitations. Thank you for watching.